This is the new Lumix G9 Mark II, and I've been waiting for this camera for a really long time. I've been a Canon shooter most of my life, starting with the original 5D Mark II, and then going on to other Canon cameras from there. When I started my YouTube journey with a channel called Kinotika, I switched over to the Canon EOS R, which was their first mirrorless option. I really enjoyed using that camera, but I found that the lenses were just way too expensive for me and they were massive. That camera also didn't have anything that I wanted like IBIS or proper 4K recording. Several years ago, I switched to the Olympus system of all cameras because I wanted a micro four thirds camera that could record 4K that had proper autofocus for video. And Olympus actually changed the game when they added the V2 firmware to the Olympus, giving it proper video autofocus. The Olympus had best in class IBIS, a great color science, and the ability to use all the Olympus Micro Four Thirds lenses, as well as all the incredible Leica Panasonic lenses. I was a huge fan of that 10 to 25 F 1.8 from Panasonic, and I would pair it all the time with my Olympus camera. Throughout the years, I continued to use Olympus, and last year, I I even picked up the brand new OM Systems OM-1 camera. There were a lot of things that I loved about that camera, but there are also some things that I didn't love about that camera. I found it to be slightly worse than the EM-1 Mark III in some ways, but I didn't want to switch to Panasonic because the autofocus just simply wasn't reliable enough. I had reviewed the Panasonic G9 in the past and really loved the color science and the speed at which that camera could take photos. But again, because the autofocus wasn't reliable, I couldn't switch to that as my main tool. But everything changed in December of 2022 when Panasonic flew me and my friend Connor out to Tokyo to check out this. The S5 Mark II, which was the first camera from Lumix that has phase detect autofocus. Finally, Panasonic is playing in the game here with phase detect autofocus systems. Now this camera is full frame, it has amazing features, but again, as a Micro Four Thirds fanboy, this wasn't what I truly wanted. I wanted a Micro Four Thirds camera with phase detect. And that's exactly what we have now with this, the Panasonic G9 Mark II. This is just my first impressions in a very simple iPhone video in my backyard to tell you my thoughts about the Lumix G9 II. I have my trusty silver 15 millimeter F 1.7 Panasonic Leica lens on here with a custom little lens hood, giving it a very Leica-esque look, which is really fitting for this camera because this camera actually has an amazing little built-in picture profile, Leica monochrome. Now is this Leica monochrome picture profile inside this camera just a bunch of marketing BS? Probably, but to be fair, apparently Leica's own engineers helped design the color of that black and white color mode. <laughs> now what's really crazy about this camera is that if you were to just not look at the lens mount and look at the camera by itself, it's totally an S5 Mark II. Look at that. That's the G9 and that's the S5. Exact same body. This was a brilliant design move from Panasonic because obviously this would help them save money. The only kind of body differences is that the S5 does have the fan built into the camera. They removed the fan on the G9 and the buttons on the front are also slightly different, but there's still two buttons on each, it's just they're kind of spread out differently on this one. And then of course the mount itself is different. This is a full frame Leica mount and this is for thirds mount. Because of that reason alone, Condor Blue's S5 cage won't mount on this. And so they've told me that they're working on a cage specifically for this camera. Now, the fact that they named this the G9 Mark II and not the GH7 is interesting because when you look at this camera on paper, it has all of the specs and essentially more than you would want in a proper GH or Video Pro line of cameras. This camera can do the USB-C recording that the S5 Mark II X can which do. Which means you can use external SSDs or even the handle from Condor Blue to record directly into their little ProBlade SSD. Panasonic has also put a full-sized HDMI port, which is usually reserved only for professional cameras, professional video cameras. Whereas I feel like the G9 has always been a photographer's camera. So I'm seeing a lot of video features already just on the body alone. This camera also can do up to 5K recording in open gate 
as well as 10-bit 422. And when it comes to shooting V-Log in its native ISO, which is 500, you can get a ton of dynamic range, similar to the GH6, because it's doing something similar to the G DGO sensor in my Canon C70. It's essentially exposing for the highlights and the shadows and kind of blending those together to give you more dynamic range. Pretty amazing. I haven't had any time to do a proper shoot with this camera yet, but I have taken some photos of my kids and done some experiments with the video, and I found it to be just as responsive, if not more responsive, than my S5 when it comes to autofocus performance. What really gets me excited is that we finally have a Micro Four Thirds option that's not Olympus, that gives us good autofocus. I recommended the Olympus EM1 to a lot of my friends, and it still is a very good deal if you're buying one secondhand. And that's really kind of the problem with this camera, in my opinion, is that the price point on it is getting so crazy close to the S5 II. In fact, in America, as I'm recording this video, this camera and the S5 II are the exact same price because B&H is doing a sale on the S5 II, $200 off, making it the exact same price as this camera. If you're starting completely fresh, why would you buy a Micro Four Thirds camera when you could get a full frame camera? Well, I do think there actually is a case for the G9 II as a primary camera over the S5 II and why I actually like it more. The first reason, for me personally, I am a stickler for teeny tiny lenses and all of the Micro Four Thirds lenses are small because the lens mount is small. I mean, look at this, this is a 30 millimeter equivalent and when I take the lens hood off, it is tiny. It is so, so, so tiny. I mean, this is what I've always wanted with my cameras and you know why I've always lusted after Leica M cameras because you can get a lens that's this big on a full frame body. This is the S5 II again with the 35 millimeter, which is a very similar focal length. And even though the bodies are obviously essentially identical, look at the difference. Now, is this really that big of a deal? Probably not. I've been carrying this around for a while now, taking pictures of my kids and stuff. But it is big, it is unwieldy, and I don't like carrying this around as a daily carry. Whereas this, because the body is so much heavier than the lens, it just balances so well. I mean, look at that, it's just a beautiful little, it's like, a, it's just a nice little, uh, little, little camera. I love it. And I do think there's something to that kind of Micro Four Thirds sensor size when it comes to depth of field. I don't know, I, d I don't really care so much about having crazy bokeh all the time. And I think there is something special to having a deeper depth of field. In fact, if you watch a lot of movies and films, they're not shooting at f1.4 all the time. In fact, often films are shot at f5.6 or f8, especially anything that was made like in the 50s and 60s. There's literally like no bokeh going on in those movies for the most part. And yes, the low light on this is nowhere near as good as you're gonna get on a full frame camera. But the year is 2023 and we've got a lot of valuable tools to help us out with low light performance. I'm a huge fan of Topaz. This is not a sponsored post or anything. I've been using Topaz AI for photos and they also have a video cleanup tool. It's incredible. You can basically input a photo that has quite a bit of noise. Bit of and noise. once you apply Topaz, it really cleans it up like crazy. The same is true for video. And now we even have AI noise reduction built into Lightroom. So yes, this camera is a little bit noisier than a full frame camera, but with some of the tools we have at our disposal, I would rather have this camera over the full frame option. Why is that? Again, because the lenses are so small and so compact and we've got so many great options from Panasonic and Olympus. I personally have the 17 f1.2, the 25 1.2 and the 45 f1.2 from Olympus and those pair beautifully on this camera. Although the software does seem a little buggy, hopefully that'll be fixed in a firmware update. Not to mention the amazing 10 to 25 f1.7 and the 25 to 50 f1.7 as well. Or is it 1.8? I don't remember. And when it comes to video on this camera, there's actually way less limitations than the S5 Mark II. And what do I mean by that? Well, there's no crop in the 4K60 mode on this because, well, it's a Micro Four Thirds sensor, so I guess the processor is able to handle it. There's no fan on this camera, which wasn't a problem for me, but some people are a little worried that water could get inside of the camera if there's a fan. Because the sensor is smaller, they don't need it, I guess. And we get even better IBIS performance on this camera. And if you're an anamorphic shooter, this really opens up even more opportunities as well. Because I feel Micro Four Thirds is one of the best platforms to build an anamorphic package off of. Because of the amazing cheap anamorphic Micro Four Thirds options, we've got USB-C charging, we've got 
full-size HDMI. Everything else about the body is essentially the same as the S5 II, which I felt was the perfect layout. We've got ISO, we've got white balance on here. Nice, easy to use dials. The EVF is fantastic on this. And I must say, just watching the autofocus move is really satisfying. And I just love the shutter sound on this camera. It's just so soft, it's beautiful. I think this is a hit. I think the price point is the only limitation with this. I know that the G9 was a similar price point to this when it came out. The problem isn't that the G9 is expensive, it's that the S5 is cheap. The S5 and the S5 Mark II are just so ridiculously cheap for a full frame camera. I think it had to be to compete with Sony. And I think Panasonic was in a bit of a pickle because all the features built into this camera, which I barely even scratched the surface on, warrant an $1,800 price point. But when you look at the S5 Mark II at a similar price point with a much cleaner, much larger sensor, it kind of makes this a hard sell for most people. But for a Micro Four Thirds nerd like myself, I couldn't be happier. Bye bye Olympus and hello. Lumix. If you liked this video, you will definitely love my S5 video that I shot in Tokyo. Make sure to watch that now.